This game looks like puke. Says Tinkus. Well, you know what, though? Let's talk a little bit about that. So this area, this foggy area, there was only so much they could do, really, with the NES colors, I think. Um, I mean, there's a lot that they were able to do, but I actually think that this is kind of cool, the way they did this, because you know what they were going for was sort of a like a darker themed game. Like imagine like Arkham City or something like that, how everything's very dark and shadows. In contrast to stuff like Zelda, the original Zelda, or you know, which is very vibrant. This was a dark, gloomy world. That the effect was designed for a CRT. Oh yeah, I didn't think of that. You know what? Now that I'm looking at what you guys see, it's not it's not as cool as, as seeing it. See, this is why I say you can't play these fucking games on on a, like on a on a modern television, it totally was designed for the you know blendiness of a CRT. And, and actually, I'm, I'm gonna say this too. So I'm playing this on a PVM monitor. I feel like this is one occasion where it, this would actually look better on a CRT because the CRT to me it like blends. I have a CRT as well. Um, like probably blends the pixels together a little more. So. That's probably the best way to play this game, is on a CRT, actually. Surprise, surprise. For a lot of this, I, I, you know, I, fuck, I prefer the, um, like, PBM, PBM monitors, but basically as long as it's not a fucking flat screen TV or something, like anything with that, basically. Commodore 64 monitor says go on fishing. Yo, Commodore 64 monitor, hold up. Hold up. So here's, here's this, the Commodore 64 monitor, if you haven't seen it before. Um, it's heavy, but um, yeah, it's like that. And basically that monitor, this monitor is great to play games on. You can hook up, it has the, um, you know, uh, composite. So you can play like NES games on there or any of the old games. This monitor is actually really, really, really awesome to play the old retro games on. It, it looks a little different than a normal uh, CRT television, like a regular tube set. It's like, at least to me, it looks a little different. Um, and I just think it's a really, um, I just love the way the games look basically on this monitor. I recommend that very highly. Like if you're not gonna get a, um, like spend all spend the money or the resources to get like a PVM or something. Um, like I would say this kind of monitor. A lot of people like the uh, uh, Trinitron monitors, but this is this is a really good monitor to try to get if you want to do retro games. So I, I would recommend that. I had a little black and white travel TV monitor, and just a, a very small, and it was like the worst thing to play games on. It was you know it wasn't color. And my first games, like I've, ta I've talked about playing, um, obviously Super Mario Brothers, but um, Ghostbusters, which is a grayish game anyway. Ghostbusters, driving around the overworld and all that with the streets. <laughs> uh, so what difference did it really make? But Ghostbusters, Jaws, those games, uh, I was playing it on a little black and white television, yeah. And um, but then I remember going over somebody's house. And they had they had a big like color CRT, and they had I vividly remember this uh, Super Mario Brothers two, and I was like, I think I actually had that too or something, and I went over and they were like playing it on this TV, and I was like, oh my god, like it blew my mind. I think that was the first time maybe I ever saw the NES in color, maybe, and I was like, holy shit, this is like amazing. So at some point, I get probably ask my parents or whatever. I'm like, I, can I have like a color TV to play this on? So I think then what we did was I, I hooked it up in the other room where we had the TV, the color TV, and then, um, then eventually I got my own. But um, yeah, so I definitely played it on a black and white TV. And then you know what's funny is when I got a Super Nintendo. Um, I actually played that on a travel television as well. I don't know why we had all these fucking travel TVs, but we did. Um, and then I, had, I was playing Super Mario World on this crappy little travel t t color now, at least. At least it was in color. Um, but I don't know. Probably my parents didn't want to spend the money on, like, a real TV. Uh, 
like a re like an extra TV because back then like we didn't have um, like they weren't gonna have a whole nother big size TV basically but eventually we got it anyway um, so I, I'm going I'm just collecting money here so this is just grinding I should have been telling that story while I was doing this sorry um, anyway that, that was that basically it sounds so archaic I know oh, it says one iron emo I know um, but you know I'm 38 years old what can I say I remember playing my NES on one of those 500 pound wooden TVs laughing my ass off says SNES girl I have one sitting over there and yeah I had um, uh, our fantasy our family had a fuck, had a this huge Zenith TV in the in the living room um, I think they, they didn't want me having the NES hooked up to it because, like, they wanted to be able to watch TV and I could, like, go in the other room and play Nintendo. That's why. I don't know if any of you guys had a Zenith. What kind of, uh, so you guys that are old enough, really, I guess in your maybe late 20s, uh, or you, anybody in here in their 30s or 40s, what kind of TVs did you guys play, um, your retro games on back then? And I know a lot of you guys probably have like the retro TVs now still to use, but I mean back then, like in the 80s, what were you guys using? Do you remember? Uh, Maury says our family's TV was a 26 inch Mitsubishi. Uh, Mobley says he had a Zenith and a Gold Star. Commodore monitor and a 28 inch Toshiba tube. Okay. Commodore Amiga monitor. See, I didn't, I didn't have any Amiga stuff growing up. The first Amiga thing I had is when I bought the Amiga CD32. I didn't have any Amiga stuff. Um, you know, Amiga was more popular, from what I know, in the like in the UK. Um, actually, there's a good question for the, who is the Amiga guy. Uh, Mad Stalker 80. So you had an Amiga monitor. Are you from the UK? Or are you from the US? I'd like to know. How many of you guys were from the United States and had an Amiga? You know? Um, Retro Alarm says yes, Amiga and Atari ST were big in the UK. Yeah, see, we didn't really. Um, we didn't really have that. So, like, see, like, a lot of people are like, well, why didn't you, why don't you do more Amiga stuff? It's like, we, we didn't, um, you know, we didn't have that. Mike, I had a 14-inch Sony TV, which survived the earthquake. Okay. That, well, it's good that it survived. Anyway, so lots of stories here. We're getting about the old, um, retro televisions. And, um, yeah, again, you know, I, I feel like I've talked about this a ton lately. But that's really my main reason why these retro systems, no matter what they do for these classic consoles, it's never going to be what it should be. Because what, like, what they would have to do is, in, a, in addition to the retro console, um, let's say, um, let's say with the NES Classic, they sold a like a CRT monitor that you could buy with it. How about you know? It'd be awesome if Nintendo came out with a special edition. And sure, it'd probably be expensive, but fucking people are already paying a hundred dollars, whatever, for the fucking the PlayStation One Classic or whatever. It would be so awesome if they came out with a Nintendo monitor. Who in here would buy a Nintendo, a brand new to Nintendo CRT monitor if they if they made it? I bet you a lot of people would buy it. And you know what it should have on the back of the monitor? It should have uh, just every kind of like, fucking have you know composite, fuck RF, whatever somehow HDMI or whatever uh, RGB. Just have everything S video. Have it all on there and have it be a Nintendo monitor be fucking awesome as long as it doesn't have input lag oh of course it would have to not have input lag see raymond ww fanatic says i'd buy it in a heartbeat 